I'm going live in tandem with with paleontologizing. <laughs> It will take a few minutes for people to come in anyway. So I'm quickly getting something to drink, but beforehand I'm posting on social media. So I don't forget. Okay, getting something to drink and then we can start in uh, a minute. I hope everybody's doing all right. <laughs> By the way, on stream you see in the moment the new logo all the streams. Thanks, Pedro, dude. Okay, let's start. Uh, today, we want to talk about value studies. How to do them, why to do them, and uh, what benefits they give you. So we start, this is the structure here, we are looking at what is a value in art, why is it important, 
how color can trick you and then we will do a few ourselves. On subjects you can choose however you want. Okay. Let's start with what the value is. I'm making a new whoop, layer here. So uh, uh, a value is, um, you might say, the lightness of a color or the lightness overall, which goes from white all the way down to black and um, they are very important for figuring out volumes and composition and we already talked about it in the previous stream on shading and stuff how different different values in the form of different tones of gray and shading can give you um, quite a bit of, an, of a feeling for, for a shape for a volume. Um, this is also true for, for colors. Colors also have, have volumes. There are of course many different volumes for red for example. But because color on top of the uh, is basically an additional information on top of um, the value, it can also be tricky to um, uh, work with color first before you have figured out all your volumes. That's why it's important to first learn how to use your volumes and why that is. Um, we will see in a second. Yes, so um, volumes, as I said, are, are very important for, for the um, for the shading, for the for the um, uh, the, the values. Did I say volume? I'm sorry. <laughs> values are hugely important for 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 the volume of your objects but also for your compositions because they help you distinguish between objects or subjects on on your canvas and they um, can give you a feeling for death and uh, stuff like that. Uh, the Lion Fire, welcome to the stream and thank you for the follow. Hello there. Um, let's see that in example here uh, with, with going back to color. Uh, these are some random colors all of the same saturation um, but when you turn them into grayscale you see that they still have, although they have the same saturation, have hugely different values. Turning everything to grayscale really helps you um, perceive that better. And um, this is often lost when when you do it wh when you when you work just by by the saturation of of the color that can misguide you in a way. Um, similar is it in, in another example here. Here we have a dinosaur in a forest. Um, and usually you would like to see the dinosaur, but it's not really that visible because the, val the, the, color, the colors are very different. This is more something reddish, this is more something greenish, um, but it, the, the, the dinosaur doesn't really come into the foreground, at least if you want it. There's of course also, so you can also play with your values in a way that um, the animals camouflaged but when you turn this to grayscale you see how similar these these values are to each other and so starting off with values in a piece can really help you figure out 
with, with what lightness you want to go for in in a painting. Here's the same thing, uh, the same scene again, but then the dinosaur has a different, uh, much brighter, um, lighter value than the trees surrounding it, for example. And uh, you see that also when we go to grayscale here, um, how much it now uh, comes to the foreground, the animal. Um, yeah, that's why you should start to learn how to use values before you go into color. Um, you can, you can work with color before you really go into, into the values. However, that is something not really advised for beginners specifically, and it's, it's, it's much more complicated to figure out your values in hindsight. It's much easier to first go everything black and white and then figure out the, the colors. Um, and when it comes to colors, oops. Um, when it comes to, to values, um, good thing to to prepare for uh, for a piece is to do a value study and um, of course you have the, the whole range of of black to white at your disposal however it is way easier if you just pick a few um, a few values a few gray tones that uh, you would choose to uh, create a scene. Um, the best thing you can do um, is, is doing value studies on, on a small piece, um, on a small piece of paper, on a small canvas, something like that. S value studies are usually not something you do on, on big pieces. It's something you want to do quickly. So when you do a, a mistake, you can just start all over again without being um, uh, something that really hurts you because you spent a lot of time and effort into it. So what you do, you open a new layer or piece of, piece of paper and I advise to not use a wool canvas or something like this but just a rectangular piece of the canvas um, on which you want to work. In the natural world, as I said before, there is of course everything from white to black in a such an abundance um, that we can perceive that we, we it, it is it is really hard to duplicate. You you can try to do that, but it's better to break down um, what you s perceive in, in the natural world into just a few values that you would use. So having a black and white palette next to your um, your canvas can can help you with that. Um, having something like five, four, or six values or so to work with can really um, help you. And also restricting yourself really um, can tickle out the creative. In you, because um, now you have to really think about where to put certain values, so it actually, um, so that things actually work in your favor for your composition. What you try to achieve about composition, we will talk probably um, uh, on on a different stream. But I can already tell you everything we talk in this stream about, as well as everything beforehand, will come back into the um, composition stream. It all basically leads up to that in a way. Um, so if you have your paper ready and have decided what gray tones you want to use, um, uh, think about okay, what, what subject you want to depict. You can basically straight jump in and uh, Let's start 
I, for example, start now with a simple landscape piece here, like a volcano here in the background. And some more hills back here or mountains. Something you should, um, it doesn't always apply, but it often applies that objects that are closer to you on a, on a, uh, on a, on a, on a bright day, um, is that uh, to the, into the distance objects become lighter, um, oftentimes also more bluish. Um, but yeah, that's something for, for color in, in the future. But I'm, for example, now adding here stuff to the foreground. Let's have some, some trees standing here, burned by a previous eruption. It's also having having this more stronger, darker colors in the foreground helps you to establish uh, where the viewer is supposed to look. Because usually, what you want to uh, have people look at is in the foreground. Most subjects are in the foreground, so having stronger colors or darker values here, uh, or stronger contrasts, helps you um, figure that out can also now go in, in here and, and add uh, like strong sunshine so on on the light side the trees are illuminated and let's have maybe small small dinosaur walk through here small head or so. That as well gets some of the strong sunlight. And let's also add some some very dark shadows here. Maybe even some some big branches here. Actually, no. Let's let's go back. This is a good example where you, where you see how to not mess up your your values, because now I'm adding some some bur burnt branches here in the foreground. In our most darkest value. And that creates different sense of death through for the wool piece. There we go. And now we have already a little little piece. That's 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 your typical little value uh, study done with a wool range of um uh, of values. Uh, let's do another one. Again on a small canvas and now use a different palette of, of uh, values for this. You can go more to the lighter side as well as to the darker side. So you, you can imagine having 
this gradient here and only picking a part of it. Um, restricting yourself in, in that sense can help a lot with um, getting down certain moods you want to capture, even if, it, if there isn't even any color in yet. Like in this case, we make from the very beginning the canvas more darker. Uh, it's it's maybe very cloudy or or it's in the evening and the sun is already set behind the horizon. Let's maybe have here rocks in, in a river. Uh, and like maybe have a tone in between here. Have some some reeds on on the shoreline. Then we maybe take the the darkest tone here and. Add in a uh, little bird. Again, we can also just take another tone for the in between. Uh, like for for the wet part of the rock here, little f footsteps all over them. That and also to give, for example, the bird a little bit of of volume here because it's not all just dark and moody. There we have uh, already a second value study you could work with to turn it into a, a finished colored piece where you would use this for orientation in how light or dark you would um, color your uh, paint. Um, you see that when I do sketches here on, on the streams, oftentimes that I first do um, a line drawing, then darken the wool piece and, and figure out the values of, of the animal more. And then for, um, first go in with a, with a base tone uh, that I then uh, d define more into a different direction. Like, like in this case here, I could go in and Say okay, I want it to be evening mood. Like this, I'll give it all reddish, and then go in and 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 say okay, everything on the more darker side, I, I go more into a bluish tone because this is uh, uh, to have a, a warm cold contrast and stuff like that. Um, so that's why these little figuring out the values beforehand can be can be very helpful for that. Of course, you don't need the darkest values in the very foreground. Let's see. Let's let's do a piece with a light palette. Something snowy, maybe. And 
think you have some trees here in the background. And here is the foliage. course they cast a shadow so maybe there is it's more darker in the background here because we don't really see so much into the distance and then on top of that there is uh, snow on many of the branches and here in the foreground there is a lot of white of that. Then maybe in the very foreground we have branches sticking out of the snow. But the uh, wait no let's take this and then let's add a little mammoth in here. So now the value of the mammoth and the background is fairly similar, but we can use now our knowledge about values to get it more into, um, make it more visible again by, for example, adding snow to its back to contrast it more against the forest. like that. Okay, um, this brings us to our last point for today, local values. Because what many people do is, and what I also sometimes um, unfortunately still do is we, we make basically when we when we do value studies of certain objects uh, we all do them in the in the same same way the same material like uh, let's see uh, little dinosaur oh, it's an alversaur and now we shade it all and it basically looks in the end like uh, um, a 3D model um, without any um, material yet to it. It's, it's, it's basically all made out of, out of the same, uh, same clay. Um, but of course that's not the case because different materials have inherently different properties of light absorption like when you when you have a portrait you make a portrait of someone and the person have bla has black hair even if you work just in grayscale you will give them darker hair with different reflective properties then uh, for example let's go back a blonde person same it is with everything else that we can observe De depending on the material things can look even in grayscale fairly different.
Uh, and now we could also think about, okay, uh, because of material, how shiny the stuff would be and, and so on. And that all plays into, into shading, material and uh, value studies. Things you should think about when you um, are working on these things. Okay, let's have a quick look at these sketches again. I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea why it is so important to, to work on understanding values. Um, why you should understand them before going too much into color. Also, you can also do this on parallel. You know, you don't have to um, do for two years value studies before you touch colors. But it, it is, I have heard stories of people who did for two years or two months nothing else but value studies with three different values, uh, dark, light and a half tone. Um, and then they begin touching colors or or use more than three values and it uh, it is a, it is a moment of joy and also makes you a lot more confident in how you construct your images okay this would be everything for this stream I hope you learned a little bit and um, yeah I will look at uh, what you do uh, or what you did after the stream see you